What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to call and use other Python programs in your Kinter apps. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to call other Python programs and use them in your Kinter apps. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, I've been getting a few questions lately on how to sort of call and use other Python programs in your Kinter apps, or how to break apart your long Kinter apps into other files that you can call and use so your program doesn't get so long and uh, hard to read and you know just to break things up so there's lots of different ways to do this in this video i'm going to show you just a very basic and simple way to do this so i've got a file called other.py because we're going to use another file another other whatever <laughs> and it's our basic kinter starter code i'm using the sublime text editor and the git bash terminal as always so right off the bat let's come up here and create a new file and let's just save this as uh, let's call this uh, name it or namer, namer.py. We'll call it namer.py. Already exists. Replace it. Yeah, replace it. <laughs> okay, so in this file, I want to create just a very basic Python program. So let's create a function. Let's define the function. And I'm going to call this name it. And let's pass in a name. And then here, let's create a variable called greeting or greetings. And then let's say hello. Well, actually, let's make an F string here and say hello. And then pass in name. And then we just want to return greetings, right? So just a very, very basic Python program, obviously. So this will take in a variable, we'll pass it in a name, it'll take that name, turn it into this string, hello, Bob, or whatever, assign it to this variable, and then return this variable, right? That's all this little program does. So very, very simple. And now obviously you're going to have more complicated programs that you're going to want to use and do stuff with. But just for the sake of example, because also it's Friday here in Vegas and, and we don't like to work hard on Friday, right? <laughs> so very basic program. So let's go ahead and save this namer.py. Now I'm saving this in the same directory where our Kinter code is. That's kind of important. So to use this, all we have to do is come up here and import it. So let's go from namer import name it. And I think that's the name of this function, name it. So we want to import this function from the file namer, right? And that's all there is to it. Now we can use that in our Kinter code, just as if it was sitting in our program, just like if it was sitting right here, right, we can use it. So I'm going to create a variable, I'm going to call it uh, greet, I guess. And I'm going to set that equal to, and let's call an instance of this function. All right, so we can call name it. Now we want to pass in a name. My name is John, so I'll pass in John. And I think it's called greet, great, greet, whatever. We'll call it greet. And now this variable should hold whatever this return, which is hello, John, since we're passing in John into this function, right? So, okay, now we can do anything we want with this. So let's create a label. Let's go my underscore label. And this is a label. We want to put it in root and we want the text to equal greet. And let's give this a font of Helvetica and give it a size of like 18 just to make it a little bigger, just to <laughs> add a little bit more interesting things to this video because it's going to be a very short video, I think. And now we can go my label dot pack and then let's pad y of 20 just to push it down the screen a little bit. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run other.py from our git bash terminal. So let's go Python other, probably spell this right, O-T-H-E-R, there we go, dot .py, and boom, it says, hello, John. And it's just that easy. If we wanna get really fancy here, we could, I don't know, create a whole entry box, box system. Let's go my box equals an entry box. We wanna put that in root. So let's go my underscore box dot pack, give this a pad Y of 20 to push it down the screen. Then let's come down here and create a button. Let's call this my button. And this is gonna be a button. We want to put it in root, we want the text to equal uh, submit 
name, I guess. We want the command to equal submit or whatever. And let's go my button dot pack. Give this a pad Y of 20. Just push it down the screen. Now let's change this label to instead of greet, let's change it to nothing. All right. So the labels there, but there's nothing in it. But when we run this submit function, we want to do something. So let's come up here. Let's create this submit function. And so what do we want to do? Well, we want to grab whatever's in my box and we want to pass it into this. So we could just call this function, right? This will call the name it function. Instead of passing John, we can pass my underscore box dot get. I want to get whatever's in there, right? And then that should return something. So let's again set this in a greet variable. We can get rid of that then. Now let's my underscore label dot config and set the text equal to greet. Right. Okay, so let's save this and run it. We did that pretty quick, but I think that was correct. So we've got this box, we can pass in any name. So we could say Bob, submit name says Hello, Bob, we can say Bill, submit name, Hello, Bill, we can say Sally. Hello, Sally, we can get crazy and go John Elder, the whole name. Hello, John Elder, and it just works. So Sure, a little bit silly of an example, you know, this namer function is sort of ridiculous, it doesn't actually do much except for it takes an in input, it does something and it returns something, which is what all programs do, right? All programs take in some sort of input, do something to it and then return it. So whatever your program is, whatever you need it to do, you can break it apart like this, and then just import it here at the top. And like I said, this is a great way to break apart your Kinder code, right? We could just as easily have put this function, you know, right here. And if we then took this off, this would still work because here's our function. When we click our button, it would call this function, which would then call this function, which is this function, and it would still work. But if you've got a huge program and you've got hundreds of functions, you may want to break it apart like this and just import it here at the top just to, to keep your program easier to read easier to understand what's going on in it just to break apart the monotony. And a lot of people ask for that reason how to do this sort of thing. And this is a quick and easy way to do it. All right, so that's all for this Friday video. Very excited about the weekend. Hopefully you guys have some good plans. Leave comments below if you want to tell me about it. I'd love to hear. And uh, that's cool. So that's all for this video. If you like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.